Last but not least, I'm going to put that at. Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. Masculinity is dying. There are almost no real men left, right? Real men are vanishing like flies. All we have left is posers, uh, people who are scammers, people who fake being masculine, people who just want to rip you off, men who had an easy life and want to make it seem like they, they know what it's like to actually endure hardships, right? We have cowards. We have people who bow down to the pressures of society. Long story short, masculinity is dying. It's under attack left and right. And even men who claim to be men nowadays are not. I mean, just look at the TRT bubble. Look how everybody's cashing in the fucking masculinity and hopping on TRT thinking it's normal, right? Just men with no honor, no integrity, getting their masculinity out of a bottle. I could go on and on. But anyway, I put a poll up today. I asked you guys what you wanted me to make a tier list on, and you picked this one. So, obviously, I went online. I literally just typed. This is what I'm going to do with these videos. I'm not going to just make my own list. I'm going to literally go online, see what's trending, and I'm going to rank them and simplify them, right, using the Pareto principle, like I always say, right, the best of the best, what's most important. So, I went online. I typed 20 things every masculine man should have. And one of the top results, once again, men's huff at it again, right? Men's huff, somehow, it's always in the top results. And uh, we're going to look at this bullshit, right? And we're going to rank it. Uh, obviously, some things they got right, some things they got wrong. But I'm going to show you guys what really matters. By the way, watch my video on toxic masculinity. If you want my opinions on, you know, the whole feminist and masculinity stuff that's going on. But anyway, all right. If you made it this far in the video, I'm hoping you saw the disclaimer because you guys are either going to hate me or love me after this video. You know, I don't sugarcoat anything. I'm very honest. I spare no one. If I'm hard on myself every fucking morning, you best believe I'm going to be hard on your punk asses. All right, so we're going to use the basic Team 3D Alpha tier list. I'm about to nut. That's S tier, best of the best, uh, fucking amazing. That's A tier. You got OK, bad, and pure garbage. Now, the criteria I'm going to use, very simple, right? How am I going to decide what's at the top, what's at the bottom? I'm going to keep it as objective as possible. No bias here. It's going to be based on three criteria, right? Anything that increases your ability to protect, to provide, or to father children, to be a good parent. That's it, because that's really the purpose of masculinity. Right. People want to overcomplicate it, come up with their own definitions. Fuck that. Right. Let's look at evolution. Let's look at the hundreds of thousands of years that Homo sapiens have been on this goddamn planet. You could go as far back as you want to Homo erectus and blah, blah, blah. But it's the same thing. Right. Masculinity comes down to three things. Your ability to protect your loved ones, your ability to provide for your loved ones and your ability to parent, to father children, to be a good father to them. And most importantly, to be a grandfather. Right. Because anybody could be a father. But it's very hard to be a grandfather. I always say this. I say fathers are legends. Grandfathers are gods. If you have a grandfather, a good grandfather, you should really thank him because that is the ultimate goal. The goal is not to pass on your genes. Anybody could pass on their genes, right? The goal is to pass on your genes and have your genes reproduce, right? Because I could have 50 kids if they all died and my line ends, right? So it's not just about being a father. It's about being a grandfather. And God forbid, a great grandfather. It just gets more and more epic. So your punk ass is here today because your father, your grandfather, your great great grandfather were absolute legends. That's why to me you're not even a, you're not even in a discussion for being a man if you're not on track to being a father and obviously a grandfather because that shows that you were actually a good dad to the point where your kids were able to get older and have their own kids. All right, so let's get straight to it. Number one, uh, I'm just gonna pick them randomly. Uh, good and bad. By the way, man, get this shit out of here, right? I'm gonna put this one at bad, right? Um, because again, that does not increase your ability to protect, that does not increase your ability to provide, and it does not increase your ability to be a, a good parent, right? As long as you bust that nut, clap your cheeks, move on, you did your job, right? Now, again, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt to be good and bad, but trust me, uh, how good you are and bad has no impact on your masculinity. It's one of those things that women have snuck into the, the, the category, but to be honest, guys, I, I've clapped endless cheeks and I have, I have so many exes who told me that I was horrible and bad, yeah, they kept coming back. Right. So if you think that being good and bad is what's going to make you a man, is what's going to, you know, have women attracted to you wrong. Now, again, that, that I'm not saying that you should be horrible and bad. To be honest, this one really depends on how big, <laughs> to be honest with you, it depends on how big your dick is. If you have a big dick, then you don't have to be good and bad. Right. Your dick is going to do most of the job. If you got a little dick, then you got to overcompensate. Right. You got to compensate by learning a few tricks here and there. Um, but it's not a necessity. Matter of fact, I'm not going to put it at bad. I'm going to put no, I'm going to put it bad because, again, it, is, it does not contribute to masculinity in any way. Now, of course, if you have a partner that you care about, um, you know, if you're in a, 
devoid of relationship, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you, you know, you might want to learn a few traits just to make your partner happy. That doesn't hurt, right? A matter of fact, just because of that, I'm going to put that okay. You know, um, if you're in a relationship and you want to make your partner happy, fine. You know, learn some skills here and there. But, again, don't, it's, it's so overrated. You know, I have so much, and not just me, I could use many other people as an example, who have so much experience with women and who are average at best in bed. In fact, I have so many funny stories I could tell you guys when I was younger, when I was single, where I would literally tell the girl, hey, I'm going to bust a nut in like two minutes and I'm going to leave. You know, and they'll be like, oh, my God, you're so savage, whatever. And it still came. I still clapped the cheeks. I still busted in two minutes and I still left. Right. So don't let women tell you that you have to be this porn star in order to either get women or keep women. It's completely overrated. Next, cooking and cleaning. I'm going to put that OK. Right. That, that's not something that. That you need to be a man, right? Women can cook and clean. That does that make them more masculine? You know? In fact, matter of fact, I'm gonna put this. I don't wanna put that bad because it doesn't hurt your masculinity at all, but it doesn't boost it in any way, right? Now, of course, if you live by yourself, um, or uh, if you're in a relationship, it doesn't hurt to learn how to cook and clean so you could help your partner out from time to time. But that's not something that should be high on the fucking list, right? As a man, you have way more things to worry about, way more things to worry about than cooking and cleaning. I know how to cook and clean. Obviously, most bodybuilders know how to cook and clean because we had to make our own food and all that shit. But that did not make me a better man because I had a fucking recipe book, right? So, again, it's something that's overrated. I'm going to put out okay because... It doesn't hurt to have. As far as the cleaning part, again, it also depends on if you're in a relationship, how you guys divide the roles. You know, if one person is the provider, one person takes care of the house, you know, again, it depends. But you don't have to be an expert chef or an expert cleaner in order to be a man. Like I said, men, we have more important things to worry about. Our job is to protect, provide, and parent. And if this comes in as a bonus, then sure. All right, next is uh, money. I'm a, I got to put this one. I'm about to nut, you know, uh, and... What, let's see, uh, over 10 years ago, if you would have asked me, I would have put it lower. But again, that's that's why men, we tend to level up once we have kids. Because I didn't understand the importance of money when I was single and young and dumb until my child was born. The moment you have a kid, your whole mindset changes. You know, you you your brain, you mature so fast once you have a child because you, you finally learn the brutality and reality of the real world. If you do not have money, enough money. I'm not saying you got to be a billionaire or all that shit, but if you don't have enough money, you cannot make your loved ones consistently happy. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I was raised in a, uh, in a community and in, uh, in, a, in a faith and a freaking religion where we, they, you know, they used to say, oh, don't worry about money. Money is not important. Money can't buy happiness. Bullshit. Bullshit. One of the biggest lies you could tell a man is not to worry about making money. Because, again, every single thing you're going to do to make your family happy your loved one's happy it's going to require money somehow else you're going to have to beg for donations or get it from somebody else it all comes down to money you want to buy your your family presents money you want to have a roof over their head money you want to have a car to you know give them rise bring them from a to b money internet money electricity money the cell phone you i mean anything you could think about that will put a smile if they're sick money you know they want to go to college money Right, you want to take them out on a vacation? Money. It's like anybody who tells you money is not important can suck my dick. I can't. If I could go back in time and just eliminate all this shitty advice that I got from all the people who said, "Oh yeah, just just worry about it. Uh, focus on God and focus on this and don't worry about money," they're keeping so many young men broke. Prioritize money, guys. Prioritize learning a skill that you can monetize as you get older because you cannot be a man. You cannot protect, you cannot provide, and you cannot parent efficiently if you're broke. It's that simple. Trust me, been there, done there. In fact, that's one of the reasons why, uh, one of the many reasons why I quit bodybuilding. By the way, when I say bodybuilding, I'm talking about serious bodybuilding. Obviously, I still work out. I'm going to live till I die. I'm talking about serious bodybuilding, serious natural bodybuilding where you're trying to grow every single muscle in your body and perfect your physique. It's one of the reasons why I quit that shit. My daughter was born, right? The focus became on being a family man, making as much money as possible to make sure that she's well taken care of. And I, in case you guys don't know, natural bodybuilding is a dead-end job. It is a job. It's a full-time job, right? It's a, full, it's a 24-hour, 24-7 job. And if you're natural, it's not taking you anywhere unless you become a scammer, unless you sell bullshit supplements, or, or unless you obviously back for donations. Think about it. Most natural bodybuilders are broke. That's a fact. Most natural bodybuilders are broke. The ones who are not are either, again, they're, they're lying, they're on roids, they're either selling shitty courses and supplements, right, or they're just begging you for donations. Think about it. Only a very small percentage of natural bodybuilders with elite genetics can make a living off of their physique. The rest have to either scam you or beg for donations. So, long story short, yeah, 
focus on making money just enough for you to be free and be able to provide for your family. Again, you don't have to be a billionaire. And remember, guys, for people who demonize money, it's because they don't know what money is. Money is really time, right? Money is time. Money is the ability to buy time. It's the ability to earn your freedom, your financial freedom. It's the ability to earn time. It's the ability to gather resources, right? Because all the things you pay for with money, you could technically get yourself, right? Going to the grocery store and spending 100 bucks on on a bag of groceries, technically you could grow those crops yourself, right? You could uh, fucking herd cattle and shit and have your steak and all that stuff, right? Your goat, your lamb, but how much time is that going to take you? Money allows you to save time, buy time, have somebody else do the work. You trade the money in exchange for that time. That's really what it is, right? Allows you to accumulate power, which is work over time. How much work can you do in a small amount of time? So the more money you have, the more quote unquote power in terms of physics, right? The physics of power, which is work divided by time, right? The more work you can get done in a small amount of time per unit of time. But anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Next, sense of style, man, bad. What the fuck? Is, I, I, I hate this shit, man. People would think, oh, well, to be, man, you got to have a sense of style. You got to have a three-piece suit and blah, blah, blah. Get the fuck out of here. In fact, a lot of them are cowards anyway, right? They're trying to cover for their insecurities and their inadequacies by having expensive watches and expensive jewelry and expensive this, expensive that. that fuck out of here, right? Some of the realest men I've met were in the fucking dark corners of Africa, in the village, providing for their family. Men who woke up, work from day to night to make sure their family was protected, provided for, and properly led. They're wearing fucking loincloth and shit, right? Guys, back in the days, right? Go back to Neanderthals. You think you think the the, the alpha Neanderthal, you know, had the most decked out sense of, you know, three-piece loincloth? Like, get the fuck out of here, man. Again, doesn't hurt to, you know, I'm not telling you to go out there and have holes in your clothes and shit. But trust me, you could make it through life with no sense of style. Right. I wear fucking pajamas, flip flops and sweatpants almost everywhere I go. Right. All of the time and energy you're going to spend into your sense of style. You could put that into things that are going to be that are going to give you a bigger return on investment. Right. Things that are a lot more important and a lot more conducive to, you know, being a masculine male. All right. Next height. Obviously, I'm going to put height at OK, simply because one, you can't increase your height. Two, I'm five, seven. So I got to cope. Three, <laughs> three, I know a lot of guys who are five, five, shorter than me, five, 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 six, five, four, uh, who are masculine as fuck, right? So I'm not going to put that higher simply because you could be short and still be a man. You could be short and still protect. You could be short and still provide. You could be short and still parent, right? So height is overrated, right? Somebody who's eight feet tall is not necessarily more masculine than somebody who's seven feet tall or somebody who's six feet. You, you guys think somebody who's seven foot tall is so much more masculine than somebody who's 6'2", right? And somebody who's 6'2 is so much more masculine. He can protect, provide, and parent so much more than somebody who's 5'8". No, it doesn't work like that. But I am putting it on the okay. The reason I'm not putting it that bad is because obviously it gives you an advantage on your triple S score, right? SSS score, if you're not familiar with that, watch my videos on that, which is pretty much how women subconsciously rank a male. You know, first S standing for security, your ability to provide security, Second S stands for status, your social status, and the third S stands for sexiness. Obviously, the taller you are, the more points you're going to get into sexiness. But again, watch my video on Triple S score for more details. Uh, let's see. Next, muscles. All right, so I'm going to put, believe it or not, guys, this is going to shock a lot of people, but I'm going to put that at OK, at the beginning of OK. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. It's very simple. And again, when I say muscles, I'm talking about like big bodybuilder muscles. I'm not talking about just being generally fit. That's completely different, right? So big bodybuilder muscles. I'm just going to put that okay because it is so overrated. Trust me, guys. You can speak to, go in the real world and speak to actual women. Accumulate sexual experience. And you're going to see, I'm going to show you guys with dad bods who are clapping just as many cheeks, if not more cheeks than the guy who spends three hours a day working out, trying to, you know, get a massive chest. Huge muscles are so overrated. When it comes to getting girls. And again, the people who don't believe me are the ones who literally have no sexual experience in the real world. Right? Their entire life is virtual. It's online. Right? I could show you skinny guys who are clapping cheeks. I could show you ski uh, fucking skinny fat guys, skinny guys, fat guys, dad bod guys who are slaying. And no, they're not outliers. They just have the things that matter the most. Right? In fact, <laughs> this is the funny thing. Everybody knows this. The more muscles you build, the more you get attraction from males, not females. Right? And trust me, if I was wrong, then the IFBB pros who are 250 to 290 pounds, 5% body fat, would be having all the women in the world. And that's not how it works. There's an inverted U-curve, like I always say. You don't want to have 
zero muscles about the same time uh putting all your rpg stats into huge muscles is not going to return that much on the amount of effort that you're putting in i mean i have guys who literally spend all day on their physique and and they're neglecting the things that matter and they wonder why they're 25 26 28 30 years old with dry dicks and no sexual experience no women nothing now the only reason why i'm not putting it lower on the list is because if you have big muscles it's a sign that you have some of the other things that are coming up on the list it's a sign that you have discipline it's a sign that uh, you consistent. You could be consistent at, at, at some things. It's a sign that you goal driven. It's a sign that you could tolerate pain, right? So that's why I'm gonna put it at okay. I'm not gonna put it lower. Is because somebody with big muscles, as long as they're natural, of course. You guys know I have almost zero respect for people who are enhanced, right? Unless they're athletes. If you, I, I already told you guys, there's only three types of people that I respect if they have if they use TRT or any other PEDs, right? That's number one. People who cannot produce testosterone naturally under any circumstance meaning genetic disorder accident testicular cancer you know stuff like that people who cannot under any circumstance produce testosterone in that case you could hop on trt you could take whatever the fuck you want i would never judge you right number two is obviously people in the military so people who are in the military life or death situations you can't go to somebody in the military and tell them oh you got to sleep eight hours a day you get, make sure you get your micronutrients your vitamin e and your boron and your zinc it's not happening you know not to mention you can't tell them make sure you keep your stress low because cortisol is no these people are literally in life and death situations if it was up to me i would put everybody in the military who obviously wants to on trt right put them on any pd that's obviously safe simply because in the life or death scenario there's no oh you know let me let me not take something that gives me a competitive advantage no it's life and death especially if the enemy soldiers are, are enhanced oh man roy those motherfuckers up uh, and that also includes the police right it's a very stressful job they cannot optimize every little thing so anybody who's in a life and death job i don't mind and the third thing is obviously athletes right athletes if you're an elite athlete and you're on roy's i don't give a fuck because your whole life your whole career depends on your performance and if you're competition finds a way to take it and i get caught you fucked so if you're a boxer mma fighter nfl player i don't care if you're on roids to be honest because if you don't you're gonna lose you're gonna lose that 30 million paycheck to, to the fucking cheater so i personally believe that you know uh elite athletes should be under obviously under under supervision should be enhanced but i could make a whole separate video about that sorry for going off topic but yeah if you don't fall into any of those three categories and you're on trt or you're on steroids I have zero respect for you. I, I said it many times. These guys are not men. They're cowards who took the easy way out. They can't hang in the real world with us. Right? Because testosterone is something that you earn. It's something you get from managing your sleep, managing your diet, managing your stress, and your body rewards you, quote unquote, rewards you by giving you testosterone through your goddamn balls. Right? So anybody who skips that and just gets it from a bottle is a piece of shit. I'm sorry. Somebody got to say it. All right, next, uh, being kind. Yeah, I'm going to put that okay, right? Because, you know, obviously you got to be kind, right? Um, but the reason I'm putting out okay is because it's a limit, right? You can't be nice to everybody. You know, you should be kind to those who deserve it. You should be kind to those who reciprocate that kindness. Um, you can't always be kind because, remember, men are bred for war. Men are bred for combat. It's just facts. It's biology. Um, so you can't always be kind. There's going to be times when you're going to have to let that the savage in you um, come forth. So I'm going to put that out okay. Uh, there's obviously a time and place for everything. Next, romantic. I'm going to put that at bad. Get that shit out of here. That's another thing that women snuck into the list. Oh, he get, I want him to be romantic. Guys, that's the biggest load of shit, right? You do not have to be romantic. Most women can't even define what romantic means. You ask them, what do you mean by romantic? And they'll tell you 20 different things that don't even make sense, right? You don't have to be romantic to be a man, right? All you got to do is do your job as a man. Again, protect, provide, parent, and everything else is a bonus. Right? It's bad enough you got to be willing to give your life for your woman. You got to be willing to give your life for your family. And in addition to that, they want you to take a fucking course on being romantic. Get the fuck out of here. That has nothing. Guys, being romantic is a bonus. If your girl, if you want to do it for your girl, you want to do it to make her happy, that's fine. But that's not a requirement. And don't let women tell you otherwise because, once again, from experience, I can tell you I'm the least romantic person you can meet. And the same girls that complain about me not being romantic got their cheeks clapped unbothered by yours truly, right? They're going to complain and say, oh, my God, I wish you could be more romantic. A few seconds later, 
So I don't want to hear. Next, a sense of humor. I'm going to put that okay, right? You got to have a sense of humor, right? You can't take life too seriously as a man. I'm not going to put it higher simply because, again, if you're not, you don't have a sense of humor, that's not going to, you're not going to lose points on your fucking triple S score. You're not going to lose points in your masculinity. Um, having a sense of humor is not going to enhance your ability to protect, provide a parent, right? So uh, that's why I'm putting that okay. But again, I'm not putting it lower because most of you guys take life way too seriously. You got to be able to laugh at shit, right? In fact, it's another reason why I'm always complaining about today's society, right? You can't laugh about anything. Everybody gets offended. You make a dark humor joke and everybody's like, oh my God, this is so offensive. Suck my dick. All right, next, intelligence. I'm going to put that at fucking amazing, right? You got to be intelligent. And then when I put, again, intelligence, that includes knowledge. That includes crystallized IQ, fluid IQ, which unfortunately you can't increase too much if you fuck, but you, you get what I mean. At least you could compensate. You could compensate for low fluid IQ by increasing your crystallized IQ. So, again, there's no excuses for you black pill motherfuckers. So, you got to be intelligent. You got to be knowledgeable. Uh, you guys know the Team 3D principles, right? You got to have that daily routine where every single day you're absorbing knowledge. But it's, Think about it, it's part of having an open mind, right? You never want to have a closed mind. There's a reason why I read over 10 or 20 studies a day in addition to all the stuff that I research. You can never know too much, right? I've read over 10,000, and I'm being nice by saying 10,000, because like I said, I've been doing 10 or 20 studies a day for the last 10 plus years, minimum, and that's minimum, because that's my daily routine. But to this day, I still wake up, and one of my top priorities is to read, what, what's, the new, what's the newest research, what's the latest study on everything, psychology, behavior, muscle mass, testosterone, whatever. I'm always accumulating knowledge. Religion, politics, chemistry, biology, I don't care what it is. If it's going to help me protect, provide, or parent better, I'm reading it, right? So you should have that same mindset, guys. Always accumulate knowledge. Don't be a closed-minded dumb fuck. That's why I laugh when people say, Megan, you act like you know it all. Bitch, I know more than you. And so that matters. All right, next, listening skills. I'm going to put that at fucking amazing. You got to have good listening skills. Again, I, to me, that that's part of the whole intelligence, accumulating knowledge thing, right? You got to be you got to be a good listener. Even the, the wisest kings who ever lived back in the ancient days. You guys know I love history. I'm a big history nerd, history, military history, anthropology, whatever. But the, the, the wisest kings who ever lived were amazing listeners. You know, everyone talks about Alexander the Great, but everybody forgets that he learned from Aristotle. Right. Everybody talks about the achievements of the great kings, the Genghis Khans of the world and the Napoleons of the world. But they forget that the advisors that they had around the table. So you got to be a good listener. Even people that I know more than I still listen to, because, again, I told you, I wake up every day thinking I'm a dumbass. No matter how much knowledge I accumulate, I wake up every day thinking I'm a dumbass. There's something I don't know. So I'm always listening, always reading, always seeking that information. All right, next, handsome. I'm going to put that okay, right? Because once again, that does not enhance, that does not increase your ability to protect. That does not increase your ability to provide. It does uh, help you in the parenting department because it's going to help you get a mate. You know, it's going to be a lot, of, it's going to be an advantage when you're looking to get a mate, but it's not going to increase your ability to directly parent, right? You could be ugly as dad and still be a good dad. So I'm going to put that okay simply because it gives you a, a slight edge when it comes to finding a mate. But it does not boost your masculinity. Once again, there are people who are way more handsome, way more better looking than me, and are still virgins, can't get a mate because they're lacking so many other things, right? So stop thinking that just because you're handsome, life is going to be super easy. Now, if you're handsome and you have the other skills that are in the top tiers, oh, yeah, life is going to be a breeze for you. Because trust me, as an ugly nigga, I had to do it the hard way. I had to overcompensate in so many other departments in order for me to make it through life. Meanwhile, guys who are better looking did not have to do as many of the things that I had to do to make it, right? So again, that's why I put that okay because it gives you an advantage, but it's not mandatory when it comes to masculinity. There's a lot of masculine, ugly ass niggas out there. All right, next, passion. I'm gonna put that in I'm a bot's nut category, right? And passion, I'm putting, you know, everything that has to do with having that zeal, having that enthusiasm, not just for life, but for whatever it is that your craft is, whatever it is that you decide to devote your entire life to, whatever your life's purpose is. Remember, Team 3D, right? Dominance, discipline, direction, right? So you got to have passion for whatever it is that you do because that's the only way you're going to succeed. I've never seen a person who's successful at what they do but don't have passion for it. I mean, think about it, guys. I love self-improvement. I love uh, helping young men. And one of the reasons why I'm still doing it to this day, even though it literally pays me nothing compared to my real income, Right, compared to my real job, the reason why I'm still doing it is because I love it, right? That's why everything I do is up there for free. That's why even though I'm demonetized all the time, I'm still making those videos. That's why even though I'm literally losing money in terms of opportunity costs and actual money each time I make those videos, that's why I still do it. Because one, I could finance my goddamn self. 
I've been doing it for the last 10 years. And two, again, I fucking love it, right? And that's also why I think about it. That's why I can't be bought. That's why I have no, that's why I turned down every sponsorship you could think about. That's why I still refuse to open a Patreon after all these years. My own subscribers have been asking me to open a Patreon. I still refuse to do it, right? Because I want no conflict of interest, no sponsorships, no Amazon affiliate links. I turn down money every fucking day in order to keep my channel free from conflicts of interest. And once again, that's why I don't even release a program or a book unless it's available for free first on the videos or the articles or the Reddit or the Discord and stuff like that. So it's impossible to do that if you don't have passion for something. So have passion, guys. It's going to make you deadly. Next, fatherliness. Obviously, I'm going to put that in I'm about to nut category because, again, you know, that's the whole point of masculinity. The whole point of masculinity is to eventually have children, lead them, and eventually, like I said earlier in the video, become a grandfather, which is the ultimate goal. Remember, the goal is not to be a father, it's to be a grandfather. So fatherliness, that's everything that comes with that, right? Patience, love, discipline, empathy, compassion, anything that makes you a good father, I'm putting that in I'm about to not category, right? You learn a lot about life the moment you have to care about somebody other than yourself. When somebody else becomes more important than you, you leveled up in life. Next, being faithful, man. Okay, I'm gonna put that okay. I'm gonna tell you why, right? Because it depends on what you mean by faithful. If you're talking about monogamy bullshit, I'm gonna put that in pure garbage, right? Because again, I've said it many times. Men did not evolve to be monogamous. This is another bullshit lie that you have fed your entire life. Men, as a species, right, right, did not evolve. We did not evolve to be monogamous. I could back this up with so much evidence. We evolved to be polygamous, right? I can make a whole video explaining to you why monogamy is uh, uh, is shoved down our throat, but I won't talk about it now because the video is going to be too long. So if you're talking about uh, faithful in terms of monogamy, I'm putting this in pure garbage. Man, if you're talking about faithful as far as like in a, you know, relationship with, a, with your partner, you guys agreed on monogamy, right? And then obviously, yeah, you got, I'm going to put that in fucking amazing, right? Because that has to do with integrity and you know being true to your word and all that stuff. So if you and your partner agreed that you're going to do monogamy, then obviously, you know, stick to it, right? I personally think that the only time a man should be monogamous is if he's trying to raise a child and uh, monogamy is conducive to that, right? So if you're trying to raise a child and your your partner is not okay with polygamy or if uh, being polygamous is going to negatively affect your child's life, then okay, you know, choose monogamy. To me, that's the only benefit of monogamy really is to raise competent children. You can still do you can still do it with polygamy, just not in this society. This society is so fucked that <laughs> it's very hard to but again, if you're not trying to have a kid, don't even waste your time. You guys know I don't even believe in relationships, right? If it's not for the purpose of having a child, I don't even believe in relationships. I think men should be single. I think relationships are a waste of time. I think they're a huge distraction. I think you should focus on your goal, your life's purpose. And when in fact that was my plan. You guys remember, right? That was my plan when I was younger. My plan was to have a kid at forty five. I was trying to just focus on myself until I had a kid and wait until I was in my mid 40s before I had my first shot. But obviously, you guys know my story. I was a professional cheek clapper. I love sex way too much. And eventually, you know, I got a kid early. Now, I'm not going to go back in time and change it. I don't regret it. Um, but it did fuck me up pretty bad. It changed the trajectory of my life. To be fair, a lot of good things came out of it as well. For one, my daughter. Two, like I said earlier, you level up when you have a kid. I just felt like I was too young when it happened to me. I was only 23. But anyway, long story short, you know, um, once you have a kid, you got to pick the method of uh, whatever system is best for them. For me, it was monogamy. I had to be monogamous. I hated it. I had to put my dick back in my pants. But, you know, it worked out. You know, I raised an amazing child. Uh, but don't let people force you into picking monogamy if you have the option to be polygamous. Because that's a natural biological state is to be polygamous. But anyway, I can make a whole separate video about that because there's so many things I have to mention, so many disclaimers and caveats. But next, integrity, I'm going to put that in I'm about to not category, man. You got to have integrity. You got to have a, you got to have principles that you stand by. You got to have, in, you got to aim to be, in, remember, integrity comes from the word intact, right? So you got to aim to be upright. Again, I'm not talking about religious bullshit, right? Get all these self-righteous virtue signaling clowns out of here you guys know how i feel about religion i cannot stand religion right i can make a whole separate video on that but again it's, it's pointless because it's all gonna it's, all it's gonna do is get emotional people more emotional because religious people religion is one of the worst things that happen to mankind you know it's like fire right it, it's it's great it's great at uniting it's great at bringing um people together or whatever but it's also great at destroying it's great at dividing it's funny how i say uniting and dividing in the same sentence be, because you're right, in order to unite people, you gotta divide, right? You gotta, in order to unite a group of people, you gotta first separate them from people who are different than them. So, 
uh, religion is a double-edged sword but this is not a video about religion i can make a whole separate video about that but now if you're spiritual like i would say that's a whole different thing to me i don't put spirituality and organized religion in the same box to me those are two different things if you're spiritual you believe in a higher power or whatever much respect to you but if you believe in organized fucking religion which is the biggest scam that ever happened to humanity which was literally created by politicians then god help you no pun intended like i always say if you in order to be religious you need to be two things first you need to either be ignorant or arrogant or both you need to be either ignorant of world history and politics and economics or you just need to be arrogant there's no other way to be religious you're either ignorant or you're arrogant it's not surprising that some of the greatest atrocities that the world has ever seen uh was committed by religious people but anyway um back to integrity i'm about to not category right you got to have a spine there's too many cowards out there guys so many men who just bend over backwards change their beliefs or refuse to stand up for what they believe in uh you know or two-faced it or all that shit right have integrity guys i said i'm about to not category is that gonna help you protect yeah right because again it means you, if you have integrity it means you have a fucking spine it means you have a spine right in order to protect you got to have a spine you can't be a coward is it going to help you provide? Of course, right? Because people know you're reliable, you have integrity. That's definitely going to help you in your career, whatever you focus on. And is that going to help you parent? Absolutely, right? You're going to bear children. Who, who wants a father who's not, you know, who has no integrity? Come on. All right, next, be dependable. Again, same thing. I'm about to not category, right? You want to be somebody people can rely on, right? And it checks all three boxes. It makes you good at protecting, makes you good at providing, and it makes you good at parenting. You want to be dependable. You know, this is, again, it's one of the reasons why I want you guys to have money. Because it's very hard to allow on a broke person. They're going to be late. You can't count on them to bail you out. You can't count on them to fucking do anything. Right? So you got to be dependent as a man. You want to be the person that people go to for help. You know, not to stroke your fucking ego. But no, because that's literally what we evolved to do. As a, Remember, we evolved as social creatures. We were always in groups. Right? You had to be reliable. In fact, that's how you, men became alpha males. I already told you guys, watch my video on your ancestor was an alpha male. Watch that one. Because... We've lost the meaning of what it is to be an alpha male. I always explain that, but somehow this myth keeps on going. People think an alpha male is just big, bad, bully. No, an alpha male was the most valuable person in the group simply because he provided the most, protected the most, and parented the most. It simply means you're the most capable person in the group. You're the most reliable person in the group. You're the, most, you're the person that the entire group can go to for leadership, for guidance, provision. That's what it meant to be an alpha male. It wasn't based on, you know... Oh, look, I could bully everybody. No, men like that got their heads chopped off. If you were an alpha male back then, it's because you were competent. So that's why I want every man watching my videos to strive to be alpha males. Be the guy that people go to for help. Whatever it is that you feel is, right? Because it's relative, right? The best pilot in the world is useless on the operating table, right? And the, and the best surgeon in the world is fucking useless, you know, in a fucking passenger plane cockpit. Let's strive to be the most valuable person in that field. Next, fitness. Now, I'm going to put that at fucking amazing, right? Notice I put having huge muscles in okay, but why am I putting fitness in fucking amazing? Because fitness includes physical strength. It includes uh, combat skills, combat ability. It includes endurance, right? Because you could have big muscles and have zero endurance. You're fucking useless. You can't even drag them out, right? So fitness includes, it also includes obviously health, right? So it includes everything. So fitness is physical health, right? Cardiovascular health, everything. It encompasses the whole nine yards, right? Also, in order to be fit, you got to have mental toughness, right? Which to me, it's so fucking crucial. If you want to be a man, you got to have mental toughness. It's very hard to be fit when you're a little bitch, right? So fucking amazing. The only reason I'm not putting it in I'm about to nut category is because some people got injured. Some people were war veterans. Some people lost their legs, right? And they're no longer quote unquote fit. Does that mean they're less of a man? Of course not. So that's the only reason why it's not in I'm about to nut category is because a man can uh, no longer be fit because of injuries and, you know, uh, war injuries, accidents, you know, that does not make him less of a man. So that's the only reason why I'm not putting this higher. Else, this would have been higher. And again, it checks all three boxes. Being fit allows you to protect. It makes you better at protecting. It makes you better at providing for your family. Because, again, men evolved to be hunters and gatherers. Because, again, men evolved to be hunters. Women selected men, right? Sexual selection based on their ability to hunt. Um, and, obviously, it allows you to parent. Because, think about it. When you're out of shape, even your fertility goes down. So, that's, again, nature saying, fuck off. You shouldn't pass on your genes. All right. Next, generosity. Being generous. I'm going to put that at fucking amazing. Simply because, again, Team 3D, the third part is direction. Having a life purpose, you know, which is which is a spiritual goal. Something greater than yourself. Having a vision for the world. Having a mission to help others. 
That's what the third letter of Team 3D stands for. So you got to be generous. That's why, again, every single thing that I put out there is for free, right? And like I always say, the ones who want to support the channel, they could go to the site, buy the ebook. But I've made this promise over 10 years ago, and I've been true to it for 10, actually 11 years now. Actually, no, 2023. So, yeah, I've been true to my promise for 12 years that every single piece of information I release will be free. This way, if I've helped you and you want to support the channel, you could grab the book. If you don't want to support the channel, you could still access every single thing in my ebook for free. But that's just one example of generosity, right? There's many examples, you know, give to the poor, help people out, you know, make yourself available, things like that, right? But you got to be generous as a man. Once again, we evolved in tribes. We evolved to be social creatures. And if you look at hunter-gatherer societies, men are actually promoted based on how egalitarian they are, based on how generous they are. Last but not least, confidence. I'm going to put that at I'm about to not category. You got to be confident. Ooh, guys. People wonder, Megan, how is it that you 5'7", ugly as shit, and you were able to accomplish so much in your life? Guys, it's my confidence. I have unshakable fucking confidence. Keep in mind, the guys who know my backstory know what I'm talking about, right? Growing up with no father in the home for the first 11 years of my life, I only saw my dad once or twice a month at most. It was usually about once a month, right? So no father in the home. The most evil person I've ever met in my fucking life was my mother, right? You guys know the backstory. Some of you do. So growing up suffering so much, right? Having to come to the United States at age 11 and having to learn a brand new language. Remember, guys, French was my native language, so I had to learn English here. Um, being bullied, right, in Harlem, New York, Staten Island, New York, having no father to protect you, your big brother's not there to protect you, your mother's a complete dictator and narcissistic, twisted, evil person. I mean, the only reason why I didn't break down and I never committed suicide and I never let depression destroy me because God knows how long I battled with depression. The only reason why I survived is because of my unshakable confidence, especially my confidence in the values of masculinity. I go, I, I mention in more details in my masculinity, my task, I go over it in more details in my toxic masculinity video, but it's my confidence, not just in myself, but in the pillars of masculinity that kept me going. Always told myself, Jonathan, no matter how bad you got it, somebody out there has it worse. Somebody out there has it worse. And if they overcame it, so can you, right? And it's because of that confidence that I accomplished so much in my lifetime, that I not only survived, but accomplished so much. People talk about they started a, they started life on hard mode. Guys, when you grow up and you don't even have the love of your mother, let alone the presence of your father, life is not on hard mode. Life is on fucking dark souls, hyper hard nightmare mode. But here I am today. So again, confidence, you got to have that, guys. You got to develop confidence. And like I always say, for people who say, well, how do you develop confidence? You develop competence. I say that all the time. Competence equals confidence. Competence breeds confidence. You want to be confident, become competent at something. Again, Team 3D, right? That's why the first letter is dominance, right? Dominance, discipline, direction. Dominance is the first letter for a reason. You got to become dominant at something. You got to become competent at something. You got to find what your genetic strengths are, what your area of expertise is, whatever it is, you got to dominate it, become competent at it, and confidence will come as a result, right? But it is impossible to be a masculine male unless you're confident, right? And women can just smell that shit on you because it's one thing that you can't fake. You cannot fake confidence, right? You cannot fake confidence, right? So all these fucking books and readers, oh, you know, 30 steps to become more confident. Bullshit, bullshit. You cannot fake confidence, right? It's a byproduct of competence. Never forget that, right? And again, it checks all three boxes. When you're confident, does it make you better at, does it increase your ability to protect? Yes. Does it increase your ability to provide? Yes. And does it make you a better parent? Absolutely, right? Who wants, to, who wants their father to be a little bitch? Come on, right? It's going to allow you to protect your children, lead your children, and, um, you know, protect them from this dangerous world we live in. There are many things that should be on this list, but again, I, had, I literally got this from this random article, and I put an order for you guys. There are many things that should be on the list. Uh, if I had to make my own version, that guys, there'll be 70 items on the list, and I will literally show you where everything goes. But uh, really, you should get the gist of it just by watching this one. So you want me to rank any other list that you find online? You know, usually what I do is when I, whenever you guys request a tier list, I just pick anything that's trending, anything that's popular, and I organize it for you guys. But I can also do what I used to do in the past, which is create my own list. So it's up to you guys. But um, but yeah, so I'm about to not category, focus on this. You know, money, passion, fatherliness, integrity, being dependable, confidence, fucking amazing, intelligence, uh, listening skills, 
faithful again this is really loyalty that's not just to women but also to men um right because you know you want to be loyal even in your social group right uh, fitness generosity right and everything else is you know okay or bad so in the okay category meaning it doesn't boost your masculinity too much but it also doesn't hurt it so that's having huge muscles being good and bad cooking and cleaning height uh being kind humor handsome all that stuff and obviously bad you know that stuff that's a complete fucking waste of time right it, it, i mean if you want to do it cool but i wouldn't spend any of my rpg points uh my stats into sense of style and being romantic get that shit out of here but uh all right that's it guys uh join the instagram i'm gonna be a lot more active on it join the discord great community there uh obviously join the reddit and as always if you want me to make more tier lists just send me lists send me any top 10 top 20 lists you want me to rank and i'll filter through the bullshit for you guys all right i'm out of here all right guys don't forget to like or share the video subscribe and hit the bell and buy my hsp nucleus of a little training program it's the ultimate program for maximum muscle growth it includes full body workout splits bro splits push pull home workouts you name it also comes with a complete guide for macros, nutrition, fat loss, muscle growth, hormones, including a meal plan. It's pretty much all my 16 years of experience condensed into one fucking book. You're also going to get free copies of any future edition. So visit team3dalpha.com and you can use the 40% off coupon code Nicholas of Lord. Or you could just buy the shit at full price. Alright guys, I'm out of here.